Good evening, fellow sinners. And because of what we're going to do now, we can rejoice and celebrate because we were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Um, before we continue with the service, one of our friends, Jill, who you know runs his shop, is, is taken ill again. And uh, twice she's had surgery with this problem, and both times, only by the province of God did she survive. The first time she was in a coma for seven days, and the second time the surgeon was very uneasy about doing surgery. Please God, she won't need surgery, but she's gone back into hospital with the same problem. And her husband, who's a paramedic, um, texted, texted me and, and talking about it. And um, so can we have a prayer of agreement? So together we pray for Jill, and we remind you, Lord Jesus, that you said, with two of you on earth agree on anything that my heavenly Father will grant. So, Lord, we entrust Jill to your loving care to return her to her family and to her church, confident, well, happy, with an ever deeper and enriched faith. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And it's happy to think it's not just our prayer, but the prayer of those many people who are sharing in the service online. That's more than the two and three that Jesus said was enough, eh? So we pray. Dearest God, we have come this evening seeking your forgiveness. So much in need, dear Lord, of your grace. Because each one of us, Lord, wants to be closer to you, wants to lead a good and holy and a pure and beautiful life, giving you praise and glory, bringing joy into the hearts of other people. So, dearest Lord, touch each one of us, Lord, that we may be ever more beautiful in other people's sight as well as yours, blessed and glorified by your healing and your forgiveness. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Islands, listen to me. Pay attention, remotest peoples. The Lord called me before I was born. From my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I have toiled in vain. I have exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while, my cause was with the Lord, my reward with my God. I was honored in the eyes of the Lord. My God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken. He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My lips will tell of your help. My lips will tell of your help. 
In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me. Pay heed to me and save me. My lips will tell of your help. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me, for you are my rock my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. My lips it is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you have I leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your help. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. I proclaim your wonders still. My lips will tell of your the Gospel Acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Hail to you, our King. Obedient to the Father, you were led to your crucifixion as a meek lamb is led to the slaughter. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, No one can be the slave of two masters. He will either hate the first and love the second, or treat the first with respect and the second with scorn. You cannot be the slave both of God and of money. That is why I am telling you not to worry about your life and what you are to eat know about your body and how you are to clothe it. Surely life means more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth more than they are? Can any of you, for all his worrying, add one single cubit to his span of life? And why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all his regalia was robed like one of these. Now, if that is how God clothes the grass in the field, which is there today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, will he not much more look after you, you men of little faith? So do not worry. Do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? How are to be clothed? It is the pagans who set their hearts on all these things. Your heavenly Father knows you need them all. Set your hearts on his kingdom first and on his righteousness and all these other things will be given you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure you agree with me about our greatest sin. We don't trust God. Some of us don't trust God at all. And some trust God very inadequately. And yet if there's anything that the Bible hammers home to us, 
that that is our first responsibility. The first thing we must do is to trust God. You've often heard me say, and you've heard it many times, I'm sure, that the most frequently used phrase in the whole of the Bible are the words, do not be afraid. So often accompanied by the words, I'm here. You know? The assurance that comes in the scripture, we've just heard it now in these readings, I mean in that gospel, beautiful images of the birds, you know? God looks after them. Because he loves them. He's made them. It's how they are. He looks after us because he loves us. We're not necessarily having the same problems as they had in the time of Jesus because they were subject to famine and they were subject to being hungry and they were subject to being almost naked. We tend to worry about other things, obviously of far less importance, and yet they're the things that give us our ulcers and our heart attacks and, and all these other things. Something comes about. And you know, the more spiritual we are, the more open we are to God, and the more God lives in our lives, then the more we are going to trust him. Those words today, I love those about the flowers in the field and that Solomon dressed in all his regalia. I love that phrase, you know. Solomon loving to put on all his wonderful garments and crowns and whatever they used to wear. But he said, nothing compared to the simple flower in the field, little wild flower, to the daffodils coming out of this moment, nothing. But they're just reflecting the beauty of God. And that is what we must be doing. We must be reflecting the beauty of God. Being a Christian is to reflect the beauty of God because we've been shown how to reflect the beauty of God by Jesus. That first reading it was the reading in Mass today and is the second song of the suffering servant, servant of God. There were four of these songs of the suffering servant. We had the first yesterday, second day, the third tomorrow, and the fifth on Good Friday. The Lord called me before I was born. From my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. That's where our journey begins. Each of us has been planned by God, called by God, loved by God. And our name is parved on the calm of God's hand to use that beautiful image of Isaiah. Hey? I was thinking, I have toiled in vain I have exhausted myself for nothing. Have you ever felt like that? Ever felt that you are rarely doing things and you just um, well, wonder ultimately where is it going? What is going to achieve? I've done this, I've tried that, I've... And all the time I feel I've toiled in vain. But all the while my cause was with the Lord. My reward with my God. I was honored in the eyes of the Lord. My God was my strength. This is the key again to our Christian life. God is our strength. God is our driving force. God is the power behind us. We know God in our head and we know God in our heart. That is what being a Christian is and embracing this God who is in our head, in our heart, in our whole being, who puts before us a vision of life. 
and this evening, and we find it so necessary that the beautiful vision that God gives us be spoiled. And so often that is because we don't trust God enough. And we say to ourselves, I think that's better than for this moment, what I'm doing is what I want to do. In that first reading, the servant of God, and remember this is to a, a Jewish audience, if you like, Ireland, listen to me, pay attention to Motus peoples, that this word is to be proclaimed to the farthest islands, as it is the final words of that passage, I will make you the light of the nation so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. It's how we are, it's how we live, it's how we bring God into our lives, which will communicate the good news to others. Just at this moment in our world, there are so many things in the world picture which are really terrifying us, which are making us very, very angry. And we look at the inhumanity, especially there in Gaza, so obvious, and we say, God, where are you? And God answers us back, where are you? Where is the influence that I have given through my church? Where is the influence I've given through my presence? How is it influencing those with power, many of whom have been baptized, leaders of the world? Where are you? But then in our everyday life, like we've just prayed for Jill, who is sick, and so many situations, we really have to bring God into the heart of them. We worry about our children, our grandchildren. But let's put them ever more trustingly into the arms of God, to entrust them to the care of God. because God loves them more than we could ever love them ourselves. God has called them from the womb. Before the Lord called them, before they were born, from their mother's name, God pronounced their names. I just pray to God this night that in all those things that overwhelm us, we will trust God. Why are you afraid, people of little faith, Jesus said. Why are you afraid? Yeah. Put your trust in God, he said. Your heavenly Father knows what you need. Set your heart on his kingdom first and on his righteousness. And all these other things you need, the Jehovah, they'll be given to you in God's own time. But to seek God first. So this evening as we look into our hearts, can we just reflect about what I have put before God, the choices I have made and continue to make, despite our good will, despite our good intentions, we so often choose other things. So often we spread the scandal. We heard the story and we want to sell it, to tell it, to give it. We can't wait sometimes to pass on some scandalous news, titillating things about other people. If we could just reflect into our own lives, If God loves each one of us, if God lives with each one of us, if God lives in me, he lives in you, and God lives in others. So any assault we make on anybody else in the presence or out of the presence, it is an assault on God. To see God in every other single person is to call to the Christian 
we ask you, Lord, to forgive us for failing to see you in other people, to lose sight of your sacred presence in your world. And we ask your forgiveness, Lord, for polluting this beautiful world you've given us. For, Lord, for that collective sin of ours, for bringing about this climate change, But the careless way, Lord, in which we have thrown things about. Lord, it's your beautiful world, meant for future generations. We ask your forgiveness. Lord, for those with whom we live, we ask your forgiveness, Lord, when we have made life difficult for them, when we've been argumentative, or in a bad mood, and done little to change it. Lord, for any unhappiness, Lord, we have caused within our family, For any trouble we have caused to our children's wives or husbands, for interfering in other people's lives, we ask your forgiveness. Lord, we ask your forgiveness for saying things to make other people think better of us. or putting things in such a way that people will, we think, look up to us. Lord, we ask your forgiveness for comparing other people to our, what we think is our better part. For making ourselves a touchstone for other people's behavior. Forgive us, Lord, because, Lord, all the good things we do is due to your grace, to your mercy, to your goodness. We cannot claim it as our own. Lord, when we look at those things in life about which we've just been talking, about all those things we let get the better of us, the worries we have, Lord, how we indeed pray for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, all those who are near and dear to us. Forgive us, Lord, for not entrusting them ever more faithfully into your loving care. Lord, and when we find them challenged and our trust in them challenged, our response must be, Lord, to trust you even more. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, where we have failed to pray for those who lead us in our country politically or spiritually, Lord, how we love to complain, and things, Lord, may be going badly, but Lord, how we have failed to pray. How can we expect them, Lord, to make good decisions if they do not have a spiritual force behind them, the spiritual force of our prayer? Lord, and we pray too for our spiritual leaders and ask your forgiveness for failing to pray for them. Lord, 
Lord, we ask your forgiveness for the many times in which we have indulged ourselves. Losing sight, especially, Lord, of times of Lent and now Passion Tide and Satisfying, Lord, our every wants. Finding it so difficult, Lord, to say no to ourselves. We ask your forgiveness. Lord, for all deceitfulness in our lives, for all dishonesty, where we have failed to bear witness to your presence with other people when it was being called for. Lord, where we have let, let opportunities slip by that your suggestion to us could be something of grace for other people. There is God in your love and mercy for the many, many sins in our own lives. We ask your forgiveness. And we'll just have a moment of silence when we will reflect into my own life upon those things not mentioned this evening. But let's just put them into the hands of God. Oh, dearest Lord, we ask your forgiveness where we have cheated or betrayed. We ask your forgiveness, Lord, for all our lack of love. Above all this evening, Lord, for failing to trust in your goodness. Shall we stand? I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin 
and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. If you wish for an absolution, would you bow your heads? God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the Church, may God give you pardon and peace, and I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merits of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all the saints, whatever good you do, whatever evil you suffer, gain for you the remission of your sins, an increase of grace, and the reward of the life to come. Amen. Amen. Now, I can't give myself absolution, but I'm sure you can give it to me. So if I just kneel before you and tell you, would you put your hand on your head and everybody, you'll extend your hand. Believe you me, it'll be a wonderful grace for me. All we're going to do now is to have a blessing, but then I'm going to ask you to sit down. Just a little surprise. So the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless your Holy Week. Let us go with Christ in our hearts. Now, you know, on, on Sundays, Sunday morning Mass, we're able to celebrate birthdays, aren't we? But some people go to Saturday evening Mass and we can't celebrate their birthdays. But there's one young man among us at the moment who has a birthday today. So I'd like Paul to come forward and we wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> Paul said, no, please, he said, I, I really am so shy. I'll tell you what, since this man had Jesus in his heart, I can tell you, he's never been shy of proclaiming it on that building site or anywhere else in the tripod. Paul. Yeah, amen, amen. Amen. Hey, all glory to God. All glory to God. All glory to God, yeah. Um, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Paul. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. One, <laughs> two, three, four, <laughs> ten. <laughs> God bless you, all. So, good night, everybody. God bless you and safely home. Yeah? Yeah? I'm going off now. Yeah? Relieved, blessed, you know, by your prayer. 
and uh, God's forgiveness. Eh? Praise God. Good night.